Welcome, everyone. I'm here with Sam Abbott. Sam from Savage Race. How you doing, bud? Hey, Brett. Thanks for having me on, sir. Hey, thanks for taking the time. Uh, you look like you're uh, kicking back and relaxing there. You had a, uh, had a well, I don't want to say rough. You had a great event this past weekend. You had a lot of work uh, coming into Chicago for your event. Uh, let's talk about where Savage Race is, how the event went, and what the rest of uh, 2020 looks like. I know those are three really big things, but maybe we can break them down. Uh, let's start off with, uh, well, how was Chicago Savage? Yeah, sure. So this last weekend, we had... The first, unbelievably, that you know, it wasn't until July, but we had the first event of the year um, in Spring Grove, Illinois. And so, uh, you know, it took a lot of work to get ready for this and to make sure that we could put on a safe event, but it went off really well. I'm incredibly proud of the product that the, my team put out there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a very, very safe race experience. Yet the course experience and, and, you know, the, for the participants out on the course with the obstacles was uncompromised. Like it was, it was one of the best events we've ever done. And people it was had a, a real, lot of fun. a real savage race, I guess that's, uh, it was a real savage race. I think even some of our participants might've been a little surprised that it wasn't a little more watered down or, yeah. um, it, it, you know, it was the race they expected, but it was still safe. So, well, I let's mean, talk. Well, let's talk about the, those two things separately. A, the race that they wanted, sure. or, or the race that they expected. But really, let's really let's dig into the safety because uh, that's the reason. And I'm sure we'll go into this later. But that's the reason why uh, Savage is able to put on events right now, while other races like you know Tough Butter and Spartan Race are canceling their season. Tell me about the safety protocols, just from a high level view. We don't need to drill into everything, but tell me about the way that the safety protocols worked for this, uh, this event out in Illinois? Sure. So, I mean, there was a combination of, of things that we did that I think made it an incredibly safe event. Uh, the first thing is these events are already outdoors. And we know there was a recent Japanese study that says that you have a 19 times greater chance of catching the virus indoors than outdoors. So mm -hmm. right off the bat, you know, the events outdoors in the sunshine, um, that, that's, that's a safety factor. And then the other thing that by default helps us is that our participants are athletic. I mean, they're already like a very healthy, young demographic. Um, so those two things, you know, we didn't really have to change much for that, but those two things go in our favor. Uh, beyond that, um, we hired medical uh, sorry, medical professionals to screen every single person who walked in. Okay. So How did that work out? Just, that's the part that I was wondering. I saw some photos but yep. um, give me a rough idea how that worked out. Cause that looked, that was the part that from an event director that looked really interesting to me. That seemed like something that was um, probably the most, the most difficult aspect to add into an event like this. You know, you'd think it was difficult, but it was actually for, for me, it was, it wasn't that hard. It, um, you know, we work with uh, a, a company called event medics of New York mm -hmm. and yep. they do this all over the country. They also do this for construction sites. So, um, this was nothing really new for them. They've been doing screening operations uh, for different types of businesses for the last few months already. So they knew exactly how to do it. Um, we, you know, I had a meeting with Jeff, the president, and he told us exactly what we needed to do. And it sounded great. So we just went with, we used their plan for that. And basically um, what we had to do, so we had to tell all the participants, we had to enforce what start times because we, we didn't want everyone showing up there at the same time. So mm -hmm. You know, we were letting in 300 people per hour and we were sending them out and uh, waves, start waves of 25 people every five minutes. So that was about the flow we expected to come to the screening. Um, what we, ha we had uh, at the busiest time of the day, which wasn't very busy, we had four screeners out there that, who were all medical professionals, EMTs or higher. And uh, what they would do is they would scan Everyone was in a mask at this point, and mm -hmm. uh, you'd walk up to their tent. They would scan your forehead. If your temperature was over, I believe, 100.4, they wouldn't let you in. Um, but then they asked a series of questions. You know, it's like the, you've probably seen them, like the CDC sure. recommended questions. Mm -hmm. Have you traveled out of the country? Have you been around someone with COVID, et cetera? So they ask those questions. If they pass the screening, they get in, they can check in. Right. So, um, that, so this that is was, all like, you know, so you have your savage race, um, operations, this is all kind of, you know, prior to that. So they're doing, yeah, you couldn't get in. 
all, all you could do before that was park your car and then walk up to the gate. That was the first thing. So when you walked up to the gate, there was someone checking your time mm -hmm. to make sure you were, you were coming in when you were supposed to be coming in. Yeah. And then there was someone, someone scanning you. Um, you and we told time? everyone ahead of time, this was going to happen. And we told people, mm -hmm. listen, don't, please don't show up if you have symptoms because you're just going to get turned around. Right. Well, um, was, were there any spectators allowed at all? No, we didn't do spectators because we're just trying to limit the, the, you know, spectators tend to kind of like hang around the festival area and sure. we're just trying to really kind of keep the crowds down. So yeah. um, we didn't allow spectators, which it's unfortunate and it's temporary, but you know, when all this is behind us, of course, we're going to have spectators back. But right now we just want to get the events off the ground for the sure. participants. No, it makes, makes a lot of sense. I, 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 so I cut you off. So now they're, uh, they're through, they, they've passed the screening. Now yep. they're into the normal savage procedure. Okay. So once you're, all right. So what now, not when you're on the course, but everywhere else on the venue, you had to wear a mask. So okay. we were enforcing that um, when you were in any of the check-in areas, transactional type areas, merchandise, you had to have a mask. So at this point they go through the screening, they already have a mask on. We asked them to bring their own, but we also had them for people if they didn't have them. Uh, now they're up to the check-in lanes. This is where they get their race packet. Um, each one of these tents had a, a clear plastic barrier, basically just a, a tent sidewall that was cut at like four feet. And that way uh, that protected the, the volunteer on the other side of the barrier and the, and the participant kind of kept them separated. And so we had those plastic barriers at every transactional area where we had volunteers or staff working um, with participants, bag check, Merch, all that. And you also, um, you also said you couldn't even walk uh, like 10 feet without bumping into a sanitation or to a, uh, yeah. a hand sanitizer station. Yeah, that was really overkill. I mean, we, um, we ordered, I think like 50 or 60 of these um, hand sanitizer stations and we just had so many, they're everywhere in the festival. I probably ordered too many, but you know, better safe than sorry on that kind of stuff. So absolutely. We had, so that was everywhere. Yeah, you couldn't you couldn't avoid the hand sanitizer, and we had a, we had that out on, out on course too, because you know you might. I mean, there's obstacles that you have to touch, and so, right. um, but there was always an opportunity to clean your hands immediately after the obstacle is over. Um, so if we jump know, right into like the the the, the starting corral, let's. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are the big points that people you know are really thinking about, I guess. So we you've taken your mask off. You're in the starting corral, or do you keep your mask on until uh, until the uh, the start, uh, the announcer announces the start. Yeah. So the way we had the start corral set up was that there were, there were physical barriers and, and things in place to separate people. And so everyone, and then there were marks on the ground. And so uh -huh. everyone got their own space and they were allowed to have their mask off once they were there. Okay. They were, they were separated. Um, and then they were not required to wear their mask on the course just because asking someone to wear a mask while running a race is, is a little too much. And, and, but, but the, the thing is out on the course, I mean, there's so much room to spread out. I mean, this sure. is a 700 acre farm and there's really, it, it wasn't very crowded, right? Like we had, our numbers were already kind of down because people are nervous about sign, like spending money and signing sure. up for stuff during a, the pandemic. So our numbers weren't great compared to prior years anyway. So it was easy for people to space out on the course and then at the obstacles, we did have like, you know, the, the little yard signs that said, wait here, they were spaced at six feet. Yep. Uh, but there were never any lines anyway, so that they really didn't get used. I mean, we had them there just because better safe than sorry. Sure. But, but it wasn't, there was, there was no waiting because, because. Uh, yeah, I saw the photos. Kimberly showed me some, some of yeah. the great photos that, uh, that you guys took out there or they, or the, her team took out there. Um, I didn't see any lines. I really didn't. And I looked through a lot of the photos and there weren't, uh, you know, there didn't appear to be any backups. That was the, um, you said 25 uh, athletes every five minutes or 50 athletes every five minutes. So in this event we did 25, I think we could have done more, uh, okay. but, but like, yeah, I mean, and that was, that's something totally new for us. We weren't sure how that was going to go Yeah, because we were letting people every five minutes, but I, I think it, uh, I think it was nice how it spaced out the, the, the people because mm -hmm. it was it was just like everyone had so much space out on the yeah. course and I, I think that was part of it because for people who don't know what we have done before coronavirus was we we were doing waves every 20 minutes and at some some locations you know we'd have as many as four or five hundred people go out in 20 minutes and obviously yeah. that's a I mean it's cool for like this the start line hype and 
kind of the party atmosphere there, but you know, we can't do that now. So, yep. so that's why we split it up. Yeah. We, um, we saw that with, uh, with the, you know, the world champs with the, the, with the 3k by doing the eight people every minute or so it was, mm-hmm. uh, it broke things up nicely, but it also kind of, you know, those, those people in the start line. And I, I'm sure that this happened this past weekend. I, I read some of the reviews. Um, the people in the start line felt, you know, with only 24, 24 other people around them, it felt like they kind of had it to themselves when they went off there wasn't a big big crush that's one thing i hate about you know races or marathons or anything else when you know the start the start gun goes off and you haven't crossed the start line for the next you know minute because you're fighting through crowds i think if yeah. anything that might be one of the great takeaways from uh you know the silver lining i guess for the way that races are right now sure yeah i mean i we felt we found a lot of silver linings through all this and um you know, a lot of it's kind of internal and operational stuff that the, the customers not may not appreciate as much as I do. But like, for one thing, um, you know, we started taking credit cards everywhere. Like before we would say, for example, parking was cash only. Well, yeah. this event, we actually sent them a link. They were able to prepay for it or use their credit card yeah. on site with a contactless reader. So yeah. I think people probably like that. I like that a lot. Um, I, do, I do too. I never carry cash. There so, are a lot of little things like that, 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 you know, kind of forced us to, to make some changes. Like we, yeah. we developed a little, um, a little race day app where like a web app where, um, you could access a lot of the things that used to be physical touches. Like for example, our results tent used to be, uh, some iPads on a table where you, everyone would share the same iPads and look up their time. But now our results was just a QR code that you could scan, it would take you to their web app, and then there was a link for the results. So everyone could just use Brilliant. their own phone, and then don't, you know. And, and so we use that web app for a lot of different things, like course maps and other other things, so to, to eliminate the need for for customer touches, you know, sharing objects. Sure. Well, and I did an interview with uh, with with Evan a few weeks ago, Evan Purpose, and we were talking about um, the future, and we'll get into the future of Savage Race. We were talking about the future of, of obstacle course racing. I said, the guys got to think back, you know, just eight, 10 years ago, not only did this not exist, but, um, you know, there was, there were, there were all these difficulties to overcome. Nobody, you know, uh, obstacle course racing was born out of just, hey, let's try something new or let's figure something out or let's overcome these obstacles. And now we've got, a, you know, a new one with, with you know, the situation that we're in right now. And we're seeing people like, you know, like yourselves, like Savage, figuring out the best ways to overcome it. Yeah. And I think a really important takeaway that I want everyone to understand after this weekend is that it is possible to safely produce these events. It mm-hmm. is possible. And you know, I, my experience this weekend in Illinois, I felt like our event, and of course, you know, people are going to say I'm biased in saying this, but, but our event in Illinois, out of all the businesses I experienced was the safest. I felt the safest inside our event than I did at the airport, inside restaurants, gas stations, um, you know, just because of all the measures and how you can, and it's outside and that you can space out. Like, you know, it's hard for other businesses to even reach the level of safety that we have. So I think that, I think that a lot of people, you know, they might look at pictures on, on the internet or look on our website and see photos from before the, the virus where everyone was bunched together and huge sure. crowds, but it's like, that's the way it used to be, but that's not the way that we're doing things now. Um, so I, I, I just, I hope we, you know, by doing this interview, we can, some people will watch and will realize that we were able to change and adapt and the situation is very safe now. We published a, an after action report yesterday that has some photos so you can go in and really see what, what the, the day was like. Um, at the same time, I also want people to understand that the race experience was not diminished. So yeah, well, like masks and the festival, all that, but like once you're on the course, it's the same old Savage Race. Uh, well, actually, in fact, I think this year's was one of the best events we've ever done. You know, with having Blitz and Race on the same day, we have some new obstacles. Um, people came back and said that was one of the the best events they've ever done. I had several people say they preferred the Chicago event this year than the one last year. See, that's awesome. Um, So when we talk about, you know, the, the adapt and overcome of this, um, you have a fight with, uh, well, we'll call it a fight, but you have some difficulties with, um, you know, local regulations at different events, uh, different uh, venues, you know, coming up that you're fighting, you know, you're, I shouldn't say fighting that, you know, you have to present the best possible outcome, you know, for all of these, these venues. So give me a tiny little bit about that. Cause I want to talk about, you know, 
the the future of of Savage Race in 2020. What you yep. know, what you've got for events, and why you're not canceling your events like some of the other races. Well, okay. So as first of all, as far as I know, because and I'm gonna I'm just gonna caveat it with that because sure. you know the these rules and stuff do change every day uh, frequently. But um, as far as I know, I'm I'm pretty confident that our plan, the protocol that we used in Illinois is in compliance with all of the state's reopening guidelines where we're going for the rest of the year. So like our next event right now would be Maryland. And I, I was, I studied the Maryland's reopening guidelines yesterday and you know, everything that we're doing meets or exceeds what they require. So, and, and I think that's true. That holds true for all the other states where we plan to go. Um, so let me ask, uh, ask this. So normally with an event, you, you know, you, you rent the, you rent the facility and they're really the only people that you have to, uh, you know, appease, you know, granted you have your insurance and everything and, uh, you know, any, uh, well, realistically, I and mean, there's no state oversight where some uh, health inspector or somebody would come out to the, uh, the event. Do you see or foresee that type of thing? Um, and do you have to ready yourself for it? Well, you know, we generally actually, our events in most cases do interact with health officials. Um, mainly they want to know, in, in the past, they've always wanted to know about, you know, how many porta potties do we have? Uh, our, do our food trucks all have the proper licenses, sure. et cetera? Yeah. So, so we, we normally do have some touch points with them, um, but it's never been as serious as it is now. And so, um, we're going out of our way to notify the local jurisdictions. Um, there's, there's certain communities where, um, you know, the permitting process has always been pretty easy or almost borderline non-existent. And uh -huh. so it, even in those places, you know, we're, we're definitely not trying to like fly under the radar with this because we, we, we're looking for an answer as soon as we can get one. Um, cause we, you know, the worst thing that could happen to a, to a company like ours is if we set up the event and then on Friday, like the sheriff comes down and tells you to close up shop. Right? right. So we, we, we want to be very open with them. And until this weekend, you know, we were telling them we were, we had a, we had a very detailed protocol, which you can find online, by the way, we have, we've published that. Uh, but, uh, we had a very detailed protocol with, and we said what we were going to do. That's one thing, right? And so like Illinois, the village of Spring Grove in Illinois, uh, their county, I, I guess their commission, commissioners approved that, which uh -huh. I'm very grateful for. But now that we've done that event, we can now, we've now proven that we can right. safely run these events. And we've done that, uh, you know, that's in the after action report I published. You know, you can see the photos, you can see a description of what happened. You can see, uh, I think there's a couple of pages of customer testimonials that I just copied and pasted off Facebook, uh -huh. uh, people say, saying how safe they felt and what a great event it was. Um, lots of photos. And so that's been published. So anyone who really wants to dig in and, and find out more about what we did and how safe it was, they can, they can refer to those documents. Awesome. Well, you know, I don't want to keep everyone hanging on. You covered so much important information. Uh, let's talk about the, uh, the upcoming events. Um, sure. you've, got, you've got three on the schedule right now. No, I think more than that. Let me see. I got, I'm pulling it up. So yeah, I, have, I just posted a couple of yesterday. I'm trying to, yeah. I'm trying to keep track. It here's, should be easy what, for me to keep track now. <laughs> so here's, here's what we have for the rest of the year. Okay. So okay. we have, uh, in, on September 12th, we're looking at Maryland fall and I feel pretty confident that one's going to go. I feel very confident that one's going to go after that. September 26th, we have Georgia fall, uh, same thing. And, um, October 10th, we're in Dallas, Texas, and November 14th and 15th, we're in Pasco County, Florida. And then the Charlotte event was scheduled for earlier this year, and that got moved to December 5th. So those are all, we're open and we're selling on our website. Now, Ohio, uh, we postponed to 2021. So that would, that would actually be our, our next event if we hadn't postponed it. But I am in uh, so, so on that particular event, we did actually receive approval from the local health authority. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, that property was recently purchased by Vail Resorts and mm -hmm. they decided we couldn't come. 
And so I couldn't keep in good faith, continue to sell tickets to an event where the venue told us we couldn't come. So I, I took that event down. It's been postponed officially. Um, I'm still trying to do an event there. Uh, so we had, I, I officially it's down and postponed, but I'm working with them. I, I feel like after what we did in Illinois, like I said, we have proof that we can do it rather than just saying we can do it. And so I'm going, I, I'm, you know, I don't want anyone to get their hopes up too high, you know, because <laughs> their, their answer was no. So like, that's the official line right now, but I am trying, I am, I am still trying to get that event off the ground. I would love to do it this year. Um, so that's, that's a little bit of inside information, but it, you know, there's a, let's, let's call it a 10 or 15% chance that we still, we can reopen that. And, and if we did reopen it, like, you know, everyone would still have the option to transfer to 2021. It's not like they would have to go to that event. I mean, that's sure. another thing we're doing. We're being very flexible with the transfer options so that, you know, if there's anybody who, despite everything that we have, you know, maybe, maybe you're an older guy or something. And despite everything that we, we have lined up for safety, if you don't feel safe, um, then you can just contact us. We transfer you. There's no fees for transfer or anything like that. So in the, this, the, <laughs> in these uncertain times, <laughs> savage race, no, really, um, with it being, uh, as weird as it is nowadays without, you know, without concrete answers, it's really ultra refreshing that, that, uh, you know, savage race, you've got a plan, you're working that plan, but the plan is, you know, is concrete after uh, Illinois this past weekend, you have a track record that you can utilize for, you know, moving, moving forward. Yeah. I mean, don't you think that matters? Like I, like I felt like we had a really good plan and we did have a really good plan going into it, but now right. that we have pictures of it and we have people who were there, you know, unbiased participants who can, you know, we, I feel like we can hang our hat on the results. And yeah. so I think that that's going to give us an even better chance of getting all these other events. off the ground, I, so. I completely agree. I think, you know, you know, engaging uh, deeper with event medics and having them, you know, uh, facilitate that, uh, that safety protocol with, you know, adding all of the additional levels of uh, safety that, that you have and, and spacing. I'm, I personally, you know, look at this and say, boy, you know, Savage is doing yeah. it right. I love the fact that we actually have, <laughs> some events on the calendar again. And, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're putting your, 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 your foot into it and saying, Hey, we're going to keep pushing um, to make sure that these events stay open, even with Ohio, you're still fighting to try to yeah. make something happen. Um, we're trying. Yeah. I, I I'm, I'm impressed. I, I, I think that you're doing, doing right by the sport of OCR. Uh, Sam, I, I always love talking with you. I wish you the most of, of success. Hopefully I can, uh, maybe swing out to Dallas and see you. That's not too far from me, but uh, you know, it's been a while since I've done a Savage Race. I'm looking forward to it again, looking forward to seeing you and Lloyd and the crew. Um, Sam, hey, awesome job. Uh, keep up the great work. I look forward hey, but, to hey, more before we go though, sure. before we go, I just want to get your opinion on something. Yeah. Um, how do you, what do you think about some of these other races? I see some of the other series are shutting down. I, I'm kind of surprised. Like, I feel like you know, there's like a template now for how to do this thing right. Like, I'd like to see. Yeah. Um, you know, so, I mean, we'd, we'd love to be the race that everyone comes to this year, right. of course. But it's like, I hate I hate to see it just for the industry. Well, I think it's, um, you know, I, I think a, a big piece of it is, uh, is scale and liability. Um, you know, Savage, you, you, you're looking at, you know, the, the, the five events in front of you. I think when you're looking, uh, and this is all speculation, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, with, with, uh, Spartan and Tough Mudder, Spartan slash Tough Mudder, <laughs> however you want right. to, you know, they're looking at, um, you know, a, uh, uh, you know, bigger crew, a wider exposure. And, um, you know, I think with Savage being, um, smaller, more focused and nimble, you know, you can, you, you are willing to be on the front lines and, 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 and fight, or at least champion your efforts to have these events. I think that there may be a, uh, you know, this may be a, a case of the scale um, prohibits the, uh, the ability for these bigger races. And I'm not saying that you're not a big race, but they are a much yep. bigger corporation. Um, they have a lot more liability on the, on the line um, to, to doing it. And, and to be honest, you know, they've got a much bigger overhead when it comes to all their employees. So if they have to cancel an, an event or two, especially in the worst case scenario that you just talked about, um, where, you know, you, you show up for an event, you put the, 
and I'm just going to throw a number out there. You don't have to agree, but you put the hundred grand into putting this event on. You're there. The tents are up. You've done everything. Mm -hmm. And the health, the, the county health official comes and says, nope, we're shutting it down. That's the type of thing you, you and I both know that can just completely destroy a company. You can't, right. you can't even, even, even fathom what it would, uh, I'm sorry, athletes can't even fathom what it would be like for you to lose all of that. Yeah, I can, I can fathom it. We went through that in March. So oh, <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. That, that's true. Um, but so no, I you're, think totally, difference... you're totally right. I, I agree with you on that. Uh, I, I'd like to say like, I, you know, I went, I live in Gainesville, Florida and I, I attended the Jacksonville Spartan race. Yeah. They were nice enough to comp me a ticket, let me in. Um, I'm actually friends with uh, a lot of the leadership there. So, cause we work on like the ASTM, uh, we're working on an ASTM safety protocol yeah. together. So like I've gotten to know them over the years and I thought, they did a really good job. So that's where I was surprised. Cause like, you know, I went to that event cause I was, I was taking notes, you know, of course we sure. were planning on reopening Illinois. I just wanted to make sure there was nothing I was missing in terms of best practices. Um, and you know, we actually, our protocol was pretty similar to theirs. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, you know, we, I think we enforced the masks in the festival. That was, they weren't doing that yet, which, but maybe they were looking to, to change to that. Uh, but I was I was kind of surprised though that after I, I felt like they had kind of laid the groundwork for opening some more events with the way they did that and then well I think they felt the same it. way too yeah I mean they you know they released their calendar shortly thereafter and said hey you guys we're here Spartans back we're open for business yeah. and uh, you know every bit of information I got from them was that they were moving forward so to see them back off so rapidly I mean we're talking what five days after releasing their schedule they canceled the schedule so for them to you know make an about face that that quickly um, you know, it, it has to be something that, that really has to do with, you know, guidelines and, and their, you know, their, their scale and just not yeah. being able to do it. Well, you know, competition's competition, but, uh, I mean, it's undoubtedly Spartan is a, as you know, an industry leader and, yeah. um, yes, you know, in, in a lot of ways they kind of set the tone for what's going on. So, you know, I just hope, and they, and they, and they have a lot of great people working there. And so sure. I just, uh, I hope they get it figured out, right? Yeah. Like, well, it's it's just not good for the sport. I mean, yeah, competition is competition, but that was that was so 2014 to 2015. You know, we've all and you talk about you know working working together with a lot of these people. We've all worked together. We all know each right. other. We all you know we're you know for lack of a better term we're we're friends and and you know connect with each other on a regular basis. We're not talking about Spartan or Savage or Tough Mudder. We're talking about the you know the the lifeblood of of the sport the sport of ocr and that's all of us together so i wish them well uh as as well i'm sure you do but uh you know hey you're you're still in the game right now and you're uh, right. doing everything you possibly can to make this happen and uh you know I, I hate to say the same thing that i just said a few minutes ago but this is the way i want i want to wrap it up well, well you're kicking ass you know i i do want people you know we're doing events right but we're we're definitely feeling the pain like sure. a lot of like our uh pretty much everyone on our teams on reduced wages and things like that. Sure. Like we're, um, we know how to get scrappy and get lean. Like we, we bootstrapped this company we never had any kind of investment or financing. It was just, you know, Lloyd and I started the company with a little, each with a little bit of our savings. Yeah. And so we've kind of kept that in our DNA. Like, uh, you know, we don't have physical offices, you know, we're, we've been work from home company for a long time. So this has been nothing new for our office team. Uh, and just, it wasn't hard, you know, we don't have debt. We never took out debt. So we, it wasn't that, and, and we have really great relationships with vendors and venues and they were, mm -hmm. they've been tremendous in how they've worked with us, some of them reducing rates and things like that. So, you know, we're just, uh, we're going to, uh, without a doubt, we're going to make it through this. Um, it's just, let's get through it. And, and we could really use the support of customers. And that's, that's why I really want to get the message out about safety is because we, we, you know, we want to keep going and we, we need, we need customers to keep right. attending these races. So, you know, I almost, I thank you for bringing that up because I almost glossed over that. Uh, when the, you know, two things, a, um, it should be known that just because you put on a race does not mean you guys are rolling in the cash again, you're grinding. No, we your... lost, we lost money on that event, but it, we just feel like it's important. I, I just don't want to keep kicking the can down the road if we right. can put it on and we're going to do it. I mean, and so, so, so you're right. Yep.
Yeah. So, I mean, so th there's that grind. Not only are you working your ass off and your team and everything, but you're, you know, you're, you're not bringing money home. You're losing money on it. Um, but like I said, you like you said, it, it's important for the sport. Um, but the other thing that I thought was really, uh, uh, really awesome, we'll, we'll hit this on the high note, was when, um, when the, the pandemic really hit and you had to close events and you had to, you know, you, you canceled your first event of the year. Um, athletes, uh, especially on the Savage Syndicate Facebook page, um, athletes really, really, really stepped up and bought tens of thousands of dollars worth of merchandise. Uh, you were they did. extremely so they did. grateful. They did. They bought merchandise. They signed up for our virtual options on Savage Syndicate, or sorry, on uh, called Savage Anywhere, yeah. which is still available, by the way. You can still do that. And even there was even one group of participants who just rallied. They raised some cash, like like almost five thousand dollars, and just sent it to us. I mean, I totally. Yeah. We're a, you know we're a for profit business, so it's totally like uncalled for. But they did, and I mean, it was just very heartfelt. Like I, you know, that. I started crying when I got that. It's like, <laughs> wow, you guys like like us that much? You're just going to send us money for nothing? Yeah. So. Well, I think it's it's not for nothing, Sam. It's for it's yeah. for exactly what you're doing right now. You're scrapping and fighting and and keeping the sport alive. And uh, hey, man, uh, I, I I totally dig talking to you. I I love the fact that you guys are are, are still rolling. And you know, uh, anything we can possibly do to help you, we're we're here for you. You know, um, you're you're an awesome dude. I love I love you guys and. Uh, you know, here, here, here's the savage having a great, well, a solid rest of, of 2020. And a great finish it up strong. We're yeah. going to finish strong, man. I keep fighting, buddy. All right. Hey, well, listen, I appreciate it so much. I, I love coming on here with you. We should do it more often. I, yeah. I looking forward to, let's do one in person sometime soon. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to get you out here to Arizona, but I know it's always, you know, it's, it's always one of those things. We'll, we'll get it soon enough. All right, brother. All right. Hey, take care, man. Take care. Bye.